What's that? It was so exciting. Where do you park your car? Level E, B, <laughs> wherever. If you are a manager, then probably you are really a powerful, you are really powerful man. Or you, you belong to the powerful people, right? And today we are speaking about how to handle power seekers. Have you ever heard about this, that when men die, they will go to heaven and there are two entrance doors in heaven. For one door, the one door stands for if you are ever, ever, if you were manipulated by women, then you have to stay on this, at this door. And the other door is if you have never been manipulated by a woman, you have to stand here. And Peter comes and sees that there's a long line from all the men who, are, who were manipulated during their lifetime. And only one guy stood in front of the door, never manipulated. Then he asked this guy, you are really a genius. What did you do so you have never been manipulated by a woman? And he said, I don't know exactly. My wife said, shut up, stand here, and stay here. No water comment. Okay, <laughs> always, or probably Every one of us is a little bit manipulated. He is in danger of being manipulated. Or in danger to manipulate people. And I think probably it's a message for every one of us. Because all of us, we have tendencies to manipulate people. And I want to speak about this. Uh, I, I, want to do, I want to do something funny with you. I want to do a little game. A little bit game. A little game. Uh, and you have to calculate only with your mind. So you, you don't have to speak out. So I, I, I give you a, a few few additions so you can ed, ed, edit. Uh, yeah? Add, add one number to the other and, uh, and count it in the, or can calculate in your brain. 15 plus 6. Okay? You can, 3 plus 56. Yeah, you don't have to say. Thank you so much. Oh, you're really good. Eh? Really good at calculating. Whoa, that's good. Um, 89 plus 2. <laughs> 12, 12 plus 53. 75 plus 26. 25 plus 52. 63 plus 32. 123 plus 5. First think about a tool and a collar. Tool and a collar. What do you think now? Hammer and red. You belong to those 80, 98% of you say hammer and red. Right? Who of you think about hammer and red? Hammer and red? No? Wow, you're really crazy. Oh, you're international? You belong to the 2% who are not manipulated. Whoa. I couldn't, I could not ever, not every one of you was manipulated. Um, I want to speak about a few stories from the Bible. And uh, we want to think about two women manipulated Herod. It's a little bit uh, an unfair situation because two against one. And Herod uh, held a, a big party, and uh, a girl was dancing there, and he was so excited that Herod said at the end of the dance, Whoa, whatever you wish, whatever you ask me to do, I give you the half of my kingdom, up to the half of my kingdom. And then she didn't have an idea, and she asked her mother and her mother said, oh, "Wow, now it's the time for you. You can manipulate Herod." And she said, "I want the head of John the Baptist served on a plate right now." And she got it. John the Baptist was the greatest prophet, and uh, and in this moment. Herod had a really good uh, relationship also with, with John the Baptist because he never wanted to kill him. 
And then in this situation, the women manipulated Herod so that he don't sit, so that he couldn't say, no, I can't do that. Manipulation forces us to betray values, to do things that we really do not want to do. That's a problem. And a second example is written in Genesis chapter 25. Jacob manipulated his brother Esau. There was a situation when he normally went out hunting, and when he came back, then he had really had, he was hungry, and, and then he wanted to eat something, because if not, uh, he, he could kill someone. And Jacob knew that. And then when Esau came home, he offered him a big burger. And he said, that's a, the best burger in town. Do you want to eat the burger? And Esau said, yes, I want it. Why now? No, 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 wait a second. You have to promise me the right of the firstborn, the blessing of the firstborn. Deal or not deal? And Esau said, yes, deal, deal, yes. Jacob was really very clever and smart, and <laughs> he could manipulate. He was able to meet, meet, manipulate Esau. Oh, another situation. Do you know the story? Yes, you know the story about Delilah and Samson. The last example of these three. A young lady wanted to know the gentleman's secret. What was the, what was the secret of Samson? Why does he have such a power, such a calling. Why, have, why does he have this strength? And she wanted to find out and she tried it several times. And uh, Samson was really successful not to say that what, what, what the real secret was. And then she said to him, How can you say I love you? Do you know this verse, this question? How can you say, I love you? He won't even share your secret with me. This is the third time. You have made me look foolish. And you still haven't told me the secret of why you are so strong. She continued to, to press the team. And after day, after day, she necked him until he was sick. And tired of it. <laughs> and in this situation, he told his secret about the long hair and so on. Do you do things that you know, never wanted to do and you, you do it because you, you were manipulated in a, in a short second and you gave up all your values? You give up all your opinions, all your Christian values. I think manipulation is, is a big, big, big topic also in the Christian world. And uh, Satan uses it to, to convince us for another lifestyle. And there are uh, several, several principles how he does it. For example, one is flattering. Flattering. Do you know flattering? Flattering is, I praise you because, not because I love you, because I want that you give me honor. I want that, that you, I am nice to you only for the reason that you do what I wanted to do with you. That I that you do my will, not God's will, not your will, my will. And that's the problem, flattering. The flatter with the aim, the flattering triggers something in you. What I want, not what you want, not what God wants, but what I want. Flattering. Do you know the principle? Yes. And the second thing is threats. For example, a young couple is together and they discuss whether it really makes sense is sexuality to live within the marriage. But one of the partner dreads and he says or she says, I want to have sex now. Either you do it or I am gone. 
Death threats. If you continue doing that, I let divorce. If you do that, I let divorce. That's threats. And you can reach a lot with threats. But it's not the principle that God us, wants us to have. He wants us to live in freedom. That you can decide in, a, in freedom what you really want and what you really have to do. And our third thing is feelings of guilt. Feelings of guilt. You say, go ahead, let me quickly, quietly alone. I eat anything, but it's not your problem. Go ahead. Or you, you trigger a feeling of guilt. If you really love me, you know the sentence? If you really love me, then. If you really love me, and you trigger a feeling of guilt. And it's not okay. It's not what God wants that you, how, how you should live. These three tactics, tactics popping up very quickly. And it's often something subconscious. We don't do it consciously, but we, it's, it's in us that we want to reach something. And we need tactics and strategies that are strategies of Satan. And I want to invite a woman who is in politics, who is in charge, or who is, um, it's, can, muss ich umstellen? It's, genau, it's, werden wir umstellen, sorry. <laughs> genau, uh, okay, I, I, want, I want to welcome a, a young woman on stage, and she is in politics, please welcome Lisa. Genau, Lisa, schön, dass du hier bist. Also ich, ich mache dieses Interview auf Deutsch. Schön, dass du hier bist. Du kannst dich hier auf den Jeff-Sessel setzen. Genau. The interview will be in German. I will be translating Lisa and then. That's very nice. Thank you so much. Lisa, du bist Politikerin. Was waren deine größten Erfolge bis jetzt? Lisa, you're a politician. What was your greatest success as of now? Der größte Erfolg ähm, war letztes Jahr. Ich bin noch nicht so lange in der Partei, erst vier Jahre. Und ich bin noch etwas jünger, mit 26, 27 Jahren. Und da durfte ich letztes Jahr schon kandidieren. Genau. My greatest success was last year. I'm 27 years, not so long in politics yet and in my party. And last year I could run for the German National Parliament. Und es war eine große Kandidatur. Hätte ich es dort schon geschafft, dann durfte ich jetzt in Berlin die Gesetze mitbestimmen. And it was an important election and I had a good place. And if I would have run, I would be now in Berlin sitting in the parliament. Warum reizt es dich überhaupt, Macht zu haben und Politikerin zu werden? What appeals to you to be in politics and to become a politician? Macht an sich ist ja nichts Schlechtes. Es wird immer Mächtige geben, die entscheiden. Genau. Power is not bad itself. There will be always powerful people who decide. Aber es wird dann gefährlich, wenn es in die Händen von schlechten Machthabern gelangt. But it's getting difficult with the power if the wrong people gets this power. Und innerhalb der Politik habe ich gesagt, ich möchte mich da dafür einsetzen, entweder selbst durch das, damit ich es tue. Oder dass ich in der Politik Menschen unterstütze, die Gutes tun, dass ich die mit unterstütze, dass sie vorankommen. Genau. And as a politician, I want to do good things and influence other people to do good things, that good things happen in our country. Du warst ja letztes Jahr so, wenn man ein bisschen geschaut hat, hat man viele Bilder von dir gesehen, hunderte von Bildern wahrscheinlich, von, von Plakaten äh, in Dörfern und Städten. Wie fühlt man sich dann, wenn man sich selbst sieht und so durch die Städte fährt? Yeah. During the election campaign, posters have been displayed in several towns and cities around the area. How do you feel if your photo is displayed all over the area? Es ist natürlich sehr ein besonderes Gefühl. Ich weiß noch, als die ersten Plakate angekommen sind, um, ich war ganz gespannt, das erste Plakat auszupacken. Genau. It's a very exciting feeling as the first posters came and were delivered. I was so excited to open the package. 
Und ein, pa äh, ein Plakat habe ich mir sofort weggenommen, um es aufzuheben für meine späteren Kinder, um zu zeigen, was hat die Mama früher gemacht. And the one poster I put aside for my future children to show them later on, oh, what did your mom do before? Und es ist schon besonders, man fährt durch die Städte und man sieht überall sein Bild. And it's really special, you drive by cars through the different cities and towns and your picture and your photo is displayed all over. Und immer mehr Menschen erkennen einen, sprechen einen drauf an. And more people get to know you, they talk to you, approach you. Und es kam auch noch hinzu, dass die Zeitungen viel berichtet haben. Ich war jede Woche, war mein Gesicht in der Zeitung. And the newspaper spoke a lot about the election and my picture was every week in the newspaper. Wenn ich auf Veranstaltungen war, wurde ich immer namentlich begrüßt und vorgestellt. If I went to any meetings and gatherings at this time, I was always introduced and welcomed by name. Und es verändert einen ein bisschen. Man ist eigentlich ein Niemand und auf einmal wird man Stück für Stück wichtiger und wichtiger und alle schauen hoch. And it changes yourself. You are nobody and suddenly you become more important and people look up to you step by step. Von dem her ein sehr schönes Gefühl, aber auch gefährlich, um nicht irgendwann abzuheben. It's a very nice feeling, but on the other side also dangerous that you don't um, separate from the foundation, from the basis. Welche Erfahrungen hast du mit Machtmenschen gemacht? Hast du auch wirklich Machtmenschen gesehen oder Leute, die halt wirklich viel Power hatten? Genau. What's your experience with power? Did you really meet people in power and how did you experience this? Durch diese Kandidatur habe ich sehr viele Machtmenschen auch näher und teilweise auch sehr persönlich kennengelernt. Genau. During the campaign I met lots of people in power also personally and got to know them. Ich hatte viele Politiker im Wahlkampf, die mich besucht haben und mit denen ich zusammen Veranstaltungen gemacht habe. Genau. Lots of politicians, they visited me, I visited them and we were together on campaigns. Auch ja, Minister und Abgeordnete, welche einfach die Gesetze für Deutschland getätigt haben. Genau. Also ministers and members of the parliament. Und der Kontakt wurde immer inniger, ich habe sie immer mehr kennengelernt, sie haben mich kennengelernt. And the contact got more intense over time, I got to know them better, they knew me. Und man sieht die Personen im Fernsehen und auf einmal sieht man sie aber auch persönlich und fängt an, Kontakte zu knüpfen. Aber dann habe ich auch eine besondere Erfahrung gemacht letztes Jahr. I also made some special experiences last year. Und meine Partei hat ähm, sehr stark verloren bei dieser Wahl. My party lost a lot during this last election. Und es war so ein, ein, ja, ein Verloren, was keiner erwartet hätte. Wir sind komplett aus der ganzen Regierungsverantwortung und aus komplett Berlin, wo die Gesetze gemacht werden, komplett herausgeflogen. Und intern hatte dies wirklich gar niemand erwartet. Und within the party really nobody expected this to happen. Und ich habe gesehen, wie diese Menschen, auf die man mehrere Jahre immer hochgeschaut hat, von jetzt auf nachher durch eine Nacht, durch eine Wahlergebnis alles an ihrer Macht komplett verloren haben. And I really saw how people who were in power over years lost all this power overnight when the election was lost. Und das war für mich eine sehr lehrreiche Erfahrung zu sehen, dass diese Macht ist gegeben, aber diese Macht ist nichts, woran man festhalten kann. You know, but it was a very special experience for me. This power is given to you, but you cannot do is to hold this power. Lisa, wenn du vorhin diese Message gehört hast, diese Taktiken von Schuldgefühle, Drohen, Schmeicheln, siehst du das auch in der Politik? Hast du das selber erfahren? Lisa, as you heard this message before, how do you feel about this flattering, about this threatening, about making people feel guilty? Did you experience this also? Ja, das gibt es selbstverständlich. Of course, I experienced this in politics. Um, jeder versucht nach oben zu kommen an die Macht. Everybody tries to come more up on the ladder of power. Und dann passieren seltsame Dinge. And then uh, strange things happening. Das Handy klingelt nachts um 23 Uhr und ein Politiker ist dran. 11 o'clock night time suddenly a handy rings and the important politician is there. Lisa, du bist so gut, du tust so eine gute Arbeit, du bist so super, wir, wir schätzen dich, dass du das so gut tust. Lisa, Lisa, you're such a great person, we really appreciate what you're doing and you're so good and so important. 
Und ich überlege mir, okay, warum? Warum ruft er mich an und sagt er mir das? And I'm wondering, why does this guy tell this to me in the midst of the night? Und dann habe ich nachgedacht und gesehen, okay, in zwei, drei Wochen hat er seine Wahl und möchte gerne wiedergewählt werden. Und dann habe ich nachgedacht und realisiert, dass zwei, drei Wochen später es eine Wahl gab, in der er mich wollte, um in dieser Position zu this position. Das ist eine Art der Manipulation. Es gibt aber zum Beispiel auch eine andere, dass man sagt, ja, bitte unterstütze mich bei der Wahl und dafür werde ich dir auf eine andere Position helfen. That's one way of manipulation. Another way is that people say, oh, you support me in this election in the party and then I will help you to get another position in our party. Du bist ja Christin und geht eine, eine Person, die an Gott glaubt, geht die anders du mit Macht? You're, you're a Christian, a person who is a Christian, do you deal different with power than other politicians? Ja, denke ich schon, auf jeden Fall. Zum einen wirklich dieses zu wissen, wo kommt meine Macht her und was ist mein, mein Basic im, im Leben? Was bin ich, wenn diese Macht wieder weg ist? Yeah. I definitely think it's different. Um, the first thing is, where does, I'm thinking, where is this power coming from and what am I doing if the power is gone? Und auf dem Weg zu dieser Macht, auf dem Weg nach oben zu kommen, ähm, geschehen auch viele Dinge, die nicht ideal sind, die teilweise nicht menschlich sind. On its way up to the power, things happening which are not really ideal and not really by human power. Und ich habe für mich festgelegt, ich werde mein Bestes tun und ich werde mich bestmöglichst anstrengen, aber ich werde gewisse Grenzen nicht überschreiten. But I decided for myself, I do what I can to be successful in the politics, but I will not step over certain borders. Weil ich denke auch, wenn man Christ und gläubig ist, kann man auch auf die Unterstützung von Gott Vertrauen, dass gewisse Positionen einem auch geöffnet werden und er einem auch hilft, den Weg zu planen. Genau. As a Christian, I can also trust God that He will open doors for me and give me the positions needed to do my work. Elisa, ich hoffe natürlich, dass du Bundeskanzlerin wirst irgendwann. <laughs> Lisa, I think you'll be. I hope that you'll be Chancellor one time. Vielleicht musst du eine neue Partei gründen. Maybe I have to start a new party. <lacht> ähm, wenn, wenn, du, wenn du Bundeskanzlerin bist, dann in, in, in zehn Jahren, denkst du dann noch an mich? In zehn Jahren, wenn du Chancellor bist, würdest du mich noch erinnern? Nee, wie würdest du Deutschland verändern? How would you change Germany? Also zuerst, es macht Sinn, in kleinen Schritten zu denken. The first thing is, it makes sense to uh, think in small steps. Man denkt an die nächste Wahl, dann an die wieder nächste Wahl, dann auch an interne Wahlen. You think about the next election, the election after this, about the internal elections. Und bevor man eine neue Partei gründet, kann man auch seine Partei nehmen und wieder aufbauen. Before you start a new party, you can also take the party you have and start building it up again. Ich bin kein Fan davon, alles gleich wieder aufzugeben. I'm not a fan to just give up everything easily. Um, und was ich verändern werde, mir geht es teilweise auch darum, dass gewisse Dinge, die gut sind, die schon da sind, dass man die auch erhält. What I want to change in politics, for me it's important that some things whom we have already in our country will be maintained and not changed. Und für mich ein spezieller Punkt ist auch ein Stück weit diese Freiheit, die wir einfach haben und wo ich sage, da möchte ich verhindern, dass dies durch irgendwelche Gesetze oder durch schlechte Machteinflüsse irgendwann verloren gehen kann. One of the things we have here in Germany is the freedom and I want to help that this freedom will be maintained and we still have the freedom in our country in the future. Lisa, ich danke dir ganz herzlich, dass du hier warst. Thank you very much, Lisa, that you're here. Sehr toll, ich wünsche dir für deine politische Zukunft und auch für deine private alles Gute. I wish you all the best for your political future and your private future. Und Thomas, danke, du warst spitze. <lacht> Let's go, let's go forward. I want, to, I want to, to introduce you with Jesus because Jesus also was manipulated. And how did he, he handle the power seekers? There's a situation that Jesus spoke about his last days and about the crucifixion. And then... In this scene, we read, from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples what would happen to him. 
He told them he must go to Jerusalem. There he must suffer from many things from the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law. He must be killed and on the third day rise to life again. Peter took Jesus to one side and began to scold him. Never, Lord, he said. This will never happen to you. In this moment, Jesus was aware that he will do that. It, it, it was his free will that he wanted to die for the, for the whole humanity, that, for the sins of every one of us. And he was really clear, and he, and he wanted to do that. And, and then Jesus said, but that was not on, our, on, our, on, my, on my master plan. It's not on my plan. What do you do, Jesus? What do you say? That's horrible. Why do you have to die? And um, probably in this situation, I don't know if you have people around you who, who, who force you to do something because they are not in your will or they, they, they think they are totally different in thinking as you. You say, I feel guilty and I find it difficult to say no. The goal of God is that we have a free will, that we are also free to say no to something. No, to say no. And another situation, but you say, I'm going to compromise and no longer stick to my beliefs in order to please others. How often did you do something because you wanted to please others? And Jesus was aware, that's my goal. And no one hinders me doing that. No one hinders me reaching that goal. And then we read in this passage that Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Whoa, what a nice name for Peter. <laughs> what a nice name. What a nice nickname, Satan, yeah? You are standing in my way. You do not have in my mind... You do, you, do, you, do, you do not have in mind the things of God. Instead, you are thinking about human things. So in Matthew 6 and 23. Satan means he is an accuser. He is a manipulator. He is a diabolos. He is a destroyer of an order. Probably you shouldn't say that to, to your grandma when she is asking about your studies and and then you go away, go away, go away, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Never do that. But I have to say, to say something. Also in the Christian world, we have the tendency to manipulate people. Also when we say, you have to believe. You only have to believe and everything works. It was a situation in, in my life. I was a youth pastor and, and we bought, we bought a, a power amplifier, power system for a sound, a sound system for 25,000 euros. And then we wanted to start with a open air outside. And, a, and we thought the weather is good, but the weather forecast was really bad and it was raining really heavy. And then I decided not to go outside i i decided to go into the room and we have a big party there and people accused me and said and we we're saying then why do you do that why do you don't you believe that god can nothing is impossible and it will be sunny at on on saturday and i said no way it's not it's not true i have a god who also let it rain and probably one, one guy prayed, please let it rain. And I'm standing, and I say, I say, I want to do an open air, sorry God, it, it must be sunny. You know what I mean? Or not an example. There is a theolo theological movement also here. People were saying, you don't have to work out from your flesh. Out from your spirit, you have to, to, to work out from your spirit only. When God wants that I work here, he will wake me up on Sundays. When, we, when, when the Holy Spirit don't, me, don't wake me up on Sundays, then I don't have to get up. It's really very easy. 
I only work on Sunday when he wakes me up. Yes? The Holy Spirit ringing bell. I don't know. I've never listened to it. But there is really a danger when you say that. Because the Holy Spirit is something, He also works in discipline. When you say, I do that, I'm part of the dream team, I come and serve every three weeks, and I want to be part of it. And the good thing is, you never can manipulate God. You never, you never can manipulate God. He is not able being manipulated because he has the supernatural power. He has the, the superior power. He has the power. And he don't let manip, uh, uh, manipulate. I want that you decide today that you say, I want to get rid of, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to get rid of every manipulative tendency by threats, by feelings of guilt, by flattery. I want to truly live before you and before man. And that you say that tonight, where you feel that you manipulate people like a puppet that someone draws and you don't want that someone draws you or here on this side and you say no and someone draws on your ropes and then you say no I want to cut all these ropes away Because I don't like to be being man manipulated. And the Holy Spirit helps you. Because God is God. It's written in Isaiah. Lord, you will give perfect peace to anyone who commits himself to be faithful to you. That's because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. His power endures forever. The Lord is the rock. The Lord will keep us safe forever. And stay on God's side. Don't manipulate God. Don't try to manipulate God. Don't try to manipulate people. Stop it. And I'm sure you will have freedom. You, will be, you are setting free right now. Amen. Amen. I want you to, to pray for you afterwards, after the next song. And I invite you today also to the face-to-face -face lounge on your left side. If you need a prayer, if you see that someone manipulated you, then please take a prayer. Let, let someone pray, pray for your life. And I'm sure you will be changed tonight.